The National Cattlemen's Beef Association's summer business meeting is underway in Denver, Colorado. We know that COVID-19 has had an effect on how we saw exports of beef happen. How do you adapt and how do you change to meet those adaptations? That was the thoughts of Dan Hellstrom. He's president and CEO of the U.S. Meat Export Federation. I think uh, in the export growth and as well as a checkoff uh, update session, we're going to be relaying that, that, that uh, consumption is still there and consumption is still growing. I mean, um, I'll give you a good example. One of the, and it's not a surprise, we were fully expecting this, but we're taking a large uh, step forward in Japan. With the U.S.-Japan Ag Agreement that went into effect January 1, we are now on a level playing field with the likes of Australia, Canada, Mexico, and we're starting to see share shift in a big way. So uh, we knew this would happen, and we're, we're really doubling down in terms of our efforts to uh, get more aggressive, and uh, we're starting to see the dividends pay off. And he says that the export growth shows that consumption is there. You know, through April, our stats were very robust and um, we're up significantly in all sectors. Um, May was a down month and this was probably reflective primarily due to the supply chain disruptions with the plants back in May, issue number one. And then issue two, number two was that was about the time Latin America went in their shutdown. So we're in a little bit of a lag here in May and June more than likely, but our forecast for the rest of the year is still very positive. I mean, we're getting ready to revamp food service in a lot of these Asian markets, uh, sort of the comeback, so to speak. And, uh, you know, we're well positioned there. So, yeah, I think July to December, we're very upbeat. And, and we're, despite all the disruption, we're still thinking significant growth for the year. Kevin Jones is the chairman of the U.S. Meat Export Federation. He talks about moving into 2021. Well, I think there's, you know, there's lots of uncertainty, obviously, for, for good reason. Um, we've had a lot of uncertainty over the last several months on what's really happening. The markets have been... Uh, very volatile, um, up and down. We've had, you know, export markets have been just booming, and then with the supply disruptions, we've had some. We've we've given some back the last couple months, and we expect June will be down a little bit. So I think there's just a, a lot of hint of uncertainty, but there's also a lot of optimism moving forward. I think that uh, you know we'll work through this and and get past it, and and things will be pretty good on the other side. So I think there's there's a there's a whole mixed bag here of what's we're seeing. And when it came to communication, the need to talk to your buyers about what they needed to meet their export demand was also a discussion and ways that they could find to adapt to that consumer wants. Um, those have been real re received real well. And then, of course, a lot of stuff in overseas, especially like uh, Korea and Japan, China has moved online, so online home delivery, and we've been a big player in that. So a lot of strategies have changed in marketing, but just getting out there and telling them the story about, you know, what's going on, what's happening, and, you know, everybody gets it at this point um, because it's impacted every country, the COVID's impacted every country, and, you know, disruptions happen, but uh, we worked through it, and I think we'll see it, we'll be coming through the other side in good shape. The online digital is gonna continue to grow, um, especially overseas, we're seeing really good acceptance of that. And I think domestically too, we're gonna to see more of the online platform, home delivery type uh, groceries and stuff like that. And as he stresses, the future does look bright for the industry. And he reminds folks, 97% of the consumption and population is outside of the United States. And beef producers are working hard to meet that demand. In Denver, I'm Susan Littlefield.